So that's the name of that tune played out over and over again around the country today as winners become losers on this day for You know, a lot of people tell me I look a lot like John Deere. I don't that's think so. Yeah, maybe it's a voice, you know. I don't think so. Or the, you know, the knowledge, that, that sports knowledge that just kind of comes through. You know, the whole persona kind of thing. I don't think so. I may be thinking of the weather guy. Keep up with the winners and the losers. Sports with John Buren on Eyewitness News. On July 14th, 15th, and 16th, WJZ-TV in the city of Baltimore present Artscape! It's a citywide celebration of the sights and sounds of art. There's ballet. Jazz chant. Charlie Bird. Chamber music. Mr. Grover Washington Jr. and Ramsey Lewis. Plus Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. Bring the whole family. Artscape 89 said something wrong to me. I don't think, I think I handled it pretty well. Maybe you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what Mark was saying, uh, the thing about New York, I'm not a big fan of that city either. Oh, well, <laughs> certainly are a big fan of the many fine restaurants, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I might be a little overweight, Paul, but <laughs> at least I don't go shopping at Chess King clearance sales. <laughs> Save the whales. <laughs> All right, our first comic of the evening has appeared in Caroline's Comedy Hour and is a writer and performer on Comics Only. From New York, here is Dan Rosen. You guys look good. This is a nice club, isn't it? That's nice. It's a nice place. This is a nice, comedy clubs are a nice place to go. Much better than bars. Bars are pretty sleazy, you know. Especially for the women. Go to a bar nowadays. It's not even a meat market. It's beyond that. It's more like a sporting event than anything else. You go to the bars. Guys are actually using sporting terms now. Am I right? Hitting on, picking up. I think it makes things a lot easier instead of having DJs in the bars have sport commentators. <laughs> makes things a lot easier. Walk into a bar, all of a sudden here. Leading off, Rob Conroy, 27-year-old college sophomore. <laughs> Rob is 0 for 3 tonight. <laughs> Hasn't had a hit all month long. <laughs> Rob is in a terrible slump. Here's the one up, Rob's first pitch. Hi. What's your sign? Strike one. <laughs> Not a good looking swing. Here's one of Rob's next pitch. Thought maybe I'd give you a lift home later. Strike in my Porsche. Check swing. <laughs> Threw the babe a curve on that one. Here's the one of the next pitch. You know, I'm going to medical school next year. It's a long fly ball going at third base side. <laughs> Staying fair, going, going. I'm from New Jersey. Foul territory. <laughs> Just left of the pole. Well, it is good to be here. Actually, it's been kind of a weird week speaking to girls. I uh, broke up with my girlfriend uh, about two weeks ago. Yeah, like you care. Anyway, we... Uh, yeah, kind of religious reasons we had to break up, unfortunately. Uh, I'm Jewish, and uh, she's a bitch. So my parents had some problems. Kind of a rough breakup, actually. We broke up uh, right after my birthday. And, uh, yeah, right before hers. Kind of tough how that works out. <laughs> A cute couple. Any other couples do this when you're going out with somebody? You read their horoscope every day, see what kind of day they're going to have? Yeah. yeah. Or am I the only geek? Okay, good. <laughs> read their horoscope, see what kind of day they're going to have, but then you break up with them, yet you continue to look for their horoscope every day, trying to look for some really sick stuff to happen to them. <laughs> so over the holidays, I'm not a big holiday fan. I don't like uh, Thanksgiving this past year I didn't like, because of Columbus. This is Columbus 500th anniversary. Columbus, he's called the founder of our country. Kind of ironic, he's called the founder of our country, because you know how he found our country? He got lost. That's how he found our country. <laughs> Do you know where he started? Anyone know where he started? He started in Spain. Anyone know where he was trying to go? Trying to go to India. Spain, India, ended up United States of America. Let's take a look at the map for a second, shall we? <laughs> in case you guys haven't played Risk in a while, this is how it works. 
Spain, India, United States of America, somewhere over here. I feel in Columbus with a lot like my dad driving on long trips. Not asking anybody for directions. Other mates are begging him to ask people, should we, Columbus, should we ask the natives over here on this island we're going the right way? Shut up, we're going to India. I know where we're going. Finally, he gets to America. Talk about self-denial, can't even admit he made a mistake. What did he do? To convince everybody, he calls everybody he sees Indians. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> of course we're in India, son. They're all Indians here. <laughs> They're not Indians, you just called them Indians. You just said they were Indians. Shut up, we're in India. We're not Indian. Look, there's a Denny's right over there, man. We're in North Carolina. I hate you. Now, I know about holidays because I'm Jewish, and if we Jews are anything, we are masters of the holiday thing. We have 163 holidays a year. Is that amazing? Kind of weird, because I always learned that holidays are based on miracles, which make a lot of sense, but come on. We Jews have 163 miracles in our past. Christians only have three. I think we Jews might be milking the miracle situation a bit here. Christians know how to run a religion. Something big happens in your religion. Boom, holiday. That's the way it should work. For instance, your Lord's born. Boom, Christmas. He's dead. Boom, Good Friday. Wait, he's back. Boom, Easter. <laughs> Jews, on the other hand, we have holidays for no reason. We just had Hanukkah, Hanukkah, an eight-day holiday based on the miracle that a can of oil that was supposed to last one day lasted eight days. Ooh. That's not a miracle, folks. That's just damn good oil. We Jews don't know the difference between a miracle and a good product. Thank God we didn't have the Swiss Army knife back then. We were going to town with that one. <laughs> Honey, it's got a toothpick and a fork. Oh, I think we got a week in April open. <laughs> Jews and Christians, though, we're pretty much the same people. Only really one difference, as I see it. Our belief system, really, just a little different, you know. For instance, uh, we Jews believe in God. Christians believe in the Son of God. It's a little confusing to me. That's like spending all your money on Frank Sinatra Jr. albums. <laughs> to offend anybody. I'm a big Sinatra fan. The point is, <laughs> having holidays is fun, though, because you get to travel a lot, and that's fun. I like traveling. I was supposed to go to Europe uh, last month, but I couldn't afford it, so I ended up going backpacking through Epcot Center for about a week and a half. <laughs> Problem with Epcot Center is it looks real, but they get these southern redneck kids to work there as the natives in the villages. <laughs> Doesn't work. For instance, we're in the French Quarter. Kid could not me. I think he's working the cotton candy croissant souvenir shop. Comes out to be part and wall, monsieur. <laughs> Kill top fly tail. <laughs> I'll fly bow. Apparently from southern France, this kid. <laughs> I'm afraid of flying though, too much, because I'm always afraid I'm gonna die in a crash or something like that. And I'm not famous enough to die yet. No. Yeah, thank you very much for agreeing with me, sir. <laughs> You know, I'm not famous enough. Famous people, when they die, it's cool because there's a reason for them to die. You ever notice this? If you're famous, you die, you have a reason. For instance, Steve Ray Vaughan, remember him? Great musician, great guitarist, died a while back, right? Thanks. Thanks. I'm not related to him in any way, but thank you very much for that nice little tribute. He had a reason to die. For instance, I'm at the funeral, right? Big public thing. The preacher starts going, well, I guess God needed a lead guitarist. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch that. I said, I guess God needed a lead guitarist for his band up in heaven. I'm thinking, aren't there a lot of good dead guys up there already? What is God and Jimi Hendrix having some creative differences all the time? <laughs> Jimmy getting sick of having Karen Carper singing back up now? Or... normal person having a reason to die. Never hear that. Hear about Bill last week? Yeah, what a shame. I guess God needed another Pizza Hut night manager, huh? <laughs> My name's Dan Rosen. You've been great. Thank you. Anyway, our next guest is, uh, is, is a terrific guy because I've been with him uh, 
for months on the show, and he's also a, a, a fine comedian. Make him feel very much at home on the A-list, Mr. Dan Rosen, please. Richard Miller, folks, give it up. Well, guess who went shopping at the Gap today? <laughs> Almost didn't even get down here. My dad uh, drove me down here. Drive, bad word, really. You familiar with that kind of dad that when he drives your car, he feels no need whatsoever to put any pressure on the accelerator? <laughs> Keeps the car going at that steady 17 miles an hour, no matter what road he's on. My dad drives so slow when we're on the highway, Amish people give us the finger. <laughs> My brother just bought himself a Yugo because uh, he's doing real well. He, uh... <laughs> he got it used. He... It's a 92. Anyway, he, he's my agent. Anyway, the point is, he had the nerve to get a car phone with a Yugo. It's a pay phone, but still. Hate driving around, especially, I hate getting stuff behind an accident, right? Now, I don't mean directly behind an accident, because that's kind of cool. That's kind of, you know, movie-ish. You know, blood, guts kind of thing. Kind of a Last Boy Scouts gang happened in front of you. I mean, when you're stuck like a mile behind the accident, don't know what's happening in front of you, you're stuck, not moving. Now the first five minutes, we're all human beings, we actually care about what happened to those people ahead of us. You're sitting there going, geez, I hope everybody's okay. It looks pretty bad, a fire truck and all that. But then after about 10 minutes, you come to this little self-realization, right? You realize that you've got places to go. They're already where they're going. So now every 10 minutes, you start bargaining within yourself how bad an accident you need to see to make it worth your weight. Start off small, first 10 minutes, you're just sitting there going, I just need to see one dead guy. That's all, just one. <laughs> 20 minutes later, how about a senior dull bus on its side, oil leak and sparks flying? That'll be helpful. <laughs> Hour later, I need to see Gloria Estefan cut in two. That's what I need to see. <laughs> getting ready to buy a car, I don't know what to do, American, Japanese. I'm getting sick of this bashing each other, these countries, Japan, America. I guess Japan started first, right? Japanese Prime Minister came out a couple months ago and said, all Americans are lazy and overpaid. Yeah? <laughs> Is that a bad thing? That's why we live here. <laughs> great thing about our country. There are not so many great things anymore. I mean, other countries are getting a little better at stuff. Japanese certainly have uh, took number one in the politeness trail. I think Japanese are certainly more polite than Americans. Think about it. I don't remember the last time their prime minister came and started blowing chunks on the White House lawn. <laughs> nice way for President Bush to cut that deal, huh? Get them to make a little agreement, buy more cars. What do you do? Oh, let's just throw up in his lap. That'll work. <laughs> There's some new form of diplomacy, whatever. Get China to turn into a democracy? Oh, thanks a lot, Hop Singh. Pull my finger. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think we need a leader who can control his body functions before we let him control the economy. <laughs> hey, I don't even mind the Japanese building better cars. I, we have other things to worry about in this country. We have more problems to worry about than they do, of course. Japanese in Japan, they don't have problems like we do. They don't have a crime problem. Like, they don't have a violence problem. They don't have a drug problem. They don't even have armed forces in Japan. Do you know this? They don't have an army, they don't have a navy, they don't have an air force. That's why, not coincidentally, most monsters attack Japan first. <laughs> That's why they couldn't help us with the war. They were too busy with the Mothra defense. <laughs> remember the war? Remember the, uh, remember the war that was on uh, the, the serious desert storm on CNN last year? <laughs> kinda kind of miss Saddam Hussein. Saddam and his little pathetic little threats to our country. My favorite, he threatened to send terrorists into New York City. Yeah, that'll make a difference. Thanks. Uh, yeah, good. The city might be safer with the terrorists patrolling. He also said he was going to send terrorists into the heartland of America. He said he was going to send them into the movie theaters, into malls. Sending terrorists into the malls of America, man. That's something. You take them on your coalition forces, that's one thing. 
taking on our American women, shopping for red dot sales at the Limited. <laughs> Hold another operation altogether. Think our American women would care if they saw a foreign guy with a middle in the sale with a gun? They walk right up to him. Excuse me, do you work here? <laughs> that head wrap is that in the accessory section? That's and that's part of the red dot sale. Oh, that's your forehead. I am sorry, sir. I. Man, remember we were great? Remember we were number one in sports? Remember those days? Man, watch the Olympics? We suck. What did we win? One silver medal in dodgeball this year? What? America used to be great. We used to be great in all this stuff. It's amazing. We're number one. You know what America does? We have professional athletes in the Olympics now. What is that all about? What is that? That's a great American philosophy, right? We can't win, we change the rules till we can win. We did that with the America's Cup. Remember the America's Cup? We won 140 straight years in a row. We lose one time, change the rules. Four years later, we show up at the dock and we just go, hey, they didn't say anything about putting a rocket engine on board the ship, did they? <laughs> New Zealand shows up with this hand-built yacht from 1955. We show up with a freaking space shuttle with a Popeye sheet tied to the mast. <laughs> it's a boat, man, it's a boat. <laughs> we are number one in one sport, of course, which is baseball. Baseball is my favorite sport. I was go to baseball games, all guys do this, we bring our gloves to the games. <laughs> what are we thinking? We're gonna get a shot at playing in the game? <laughs> Cal Ripken Jr. is gonna get hurt, hit by a pitch? Announcer's gonna come on? Yeah, Cal Jr. is hurt. Uh, Murray Feldman, section 14, row 12. <laughs> Can he come down, take a couple ground balls? <laughs> oh, good, good, you got your glove? Perfect. <laughs> you know, the war ended, and then baseball season started, you know that. Baseball announcers would never let a war preempt a baseball game. Baseball's too important. You know, at least to the announcers, they don't care what's going on. You ever listen to baseball announcers? Got on the fourth inning, Cal Ripken Jr. up for the Orioles. He's batting 292, 21 home runs, 90 RBIs. He's facing left-hander Perez of the Yankees. Yankees up 4-1, bottom of the fourth. Oh, by the way, this message came in last inning from the emergency broadcast system. <laughs> Sorry, forgot to mention that. Apparently seen that the Iraqi military has just launched a total nuclear strike of 348. That's going way back to the wall. <laughs> Bottles out of here. Cal Ripken was number 23 on the earth at 4 2 ball game. The O's are right back in this one. Let me bring up the left hander Orsalak to face the lefty Perez. And speaking of leftists, let's get back to that military message for just a second. <laughs> Apparently, seeing the Iraqi military has 348 incoming thermonuclear warheads that will be landing within the continent of the United States within the next 5 to 15 minutes. And speaking of incoming, Cleveland Indians, big homestand this weekend. <laughs> Geiger counter night, Saturday night. Watch out for that one. We're gonna go over a list of some of the cities already destroyed by the nuclear holocaust. We'll start with the National League. <laughs> Pirates had a close one over the Padres till nuclear winter stopped playing in the fourth inning. 40% destruction in that fair city. Over the American League West, some early numbers. Seattle, Washington, 22% destroyed. This just in, Toronto, Ontario, 100% destroyed. That'll make the Orioles happy. That'll move them up a notch in the standings. <laughs> That's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much.